Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Tech Tutorials. Today I'm gonna to show you how to create a custom nameplate. Now there are several ways you can go about doing this. In the end, it just depends on the design that you wanna create. So far in our tutorials, we've worked with the basic shape menu. Uh, if I click on that and a drop down menu appears, we're gonna click text and numbers. And one of the first options you'll see is a text tool. And then you also have all of the individual letters that you could drag out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the text tool. So if I click on it once, drag it over and then click one more time on the work plane, uh, our little sub menu pops up and this is where we could edit our text. So I'm going to get rid of the word text and I'm going to type in uh, tech tutorials. Uh, the font, it only gives you a few fonts to choose from. I'm just going to stick with the first one for right now. Uh, and again, the height it, right now it is at 10 millimeters. So our height means right from the back to the front of our word. Right, right now is 10 millimeters. Uh, I'm cool with that. Again, if I wanted to make it taller, I could either drag this bar taller. You can see it's much larger now. I could make it smaller. And again, you can click on the number value and actually type in the exact measurement that you want. So I'm going to keep it at 10. And if I'm fine with it, I can click back on the work plane, right? And now it's all done. And I can drag this around just like we can move any shape. Um, same thing applies as well. If I click on one of the white boxes in the corner, I can actually close the sub menu so we can see it I could type in the uh, sizes as well if I wanted the words instead of let's say 21.66 if I wanted a 30 <clears throat> right I can make it taller I can make this a little narrower your proportions may be off but again you can edit everything about this phrase now again just like the shapes if I go to the side and I find my arrow I can actually rotate this up as well I can elevate it off of the work plane Right, and I'm fine with it just being like this. That's totally fine as well. Keep in mind that if you were to print the file just like this, it's gonna print pretty much all individual letters because you notice there's nothing keeping uh, the letters attached to each other. For example, this T isn't attached to the O or the U. Even though it's all one word and one object, uh, if you try and print this, it's gonna be all separate letters. So one thing you can do is you can add a base or a stand to it. So if I go back to my basic shapes, I'm just gonna click the box and I'm gonna click it on the work plane and I'm just gonna really rough um, make it a little larger than the word that I have here. So I'm gonna click this black box in the middle and I'm gonna drag this out, we'll say right around there. I'm gonna make it a little shorter. All right, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna move this actually right into the word that we made. So you can see how part of the letters are disappearing into this little platform that we made. And that's okay. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Oops, wrong one. I'm going to click the word. There we go. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. And if you're unsure how to move things around and rotate them, please make sure to check out the other tutorials I've posted. Now what I'm doing here, I have the word so that they're just inset a little bit. And that's totally fine because if I were to print this file now, everything would be attached. Right, and it would appear just as is. Now, one little added feature you could do with the box tool, or the box shape, I should say, is if I click on it and our submenu pops up, we have what's called a radius option. Now, right now it's zero, which means that all the corners are at a 90 degree angle. But if I were to increase this a little bit, you may be noticing on the tutorial, my edges start to actually round over a little bit. So you can see how these are kind of curved. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can see how Right, all of my edges are curved and the more I increase this, right, the more severe it becomes. Now keep in mind, right, my whole object is curving now. So that's something that you may not want to do. Uh, as extreme as I did, I should say. So I'm going to go back just so we have, right, our regular box. And again, this is just a really simple nameplate. You could do the same thing uh, by dragging over individual letters. So I'm going to go back to my text and numbers option. Uh, and I'm going to grab just a couple letters. I'm going to grab a T. I'm going to spell out the word tech. I'm going to put T, E, C, and H. Now, in one of my other tutorials, I showed you guys how to align uh, objects. I'm going to do that with my letters just so that they're all lined up on the bottom of each letter. So I'm going to group them, go to my align tool. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and align them so that they are all, all in line with each other on the bottom. Now, I know the spacing between them isn't even, 
And what you can actually do then is if I click on a letter, I can just move it left to right. So I can click on the C, move it over a little bit so it looks even. Move this one over a little bit too, trying to keep the spacing even though I'm just ironing it up, right? And we could say that this is all lined up. I could then click on this, or highlight over everything, and now I can group it. Again, this was also one of my other previous tutorials. And now this word tech is all one object. So just like the text tool, now I can edit each one and so on. Um, something else you can do if you wanted let's say all the letters to uh, be different sizes and kind of make it funky um, instead of grouping all the letters like what I did here right I could make each individual letter different sizes I'm gonna drag this one a little bit bigger I'm gonna make this one oops move this one over I'm gonna make this one a little bigger and I'm gonna keep that H the same now, just like we did for the word on top of the base, we want to make sure these are attached if I wanted to print something really funky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the T just so it's inside that E a little bit. You can see how part of the T is inside the corner of the E. So that's fine. I could put the C up like this, and then I could drag the H kind of right in there as well. So you can see how all the letters are connected. And then once again, I can left click and drag over everything. I can group it together. And now I got kind of this funky little nameplate as well. You can play around with all the other shapes and tools in here and again, kind of go as crazy as you could think of. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Please make sure to click subscribe below and turn on notifications and also follow us on Instagram at quick underscore tech underscore tutorials to stay updated on any new tutorials we post.